I'm a native New Yorker, best place to grow up. I'm the co-founder of Marquee Jet, a private jet company, and now the uh, founder of a brand incubator called Sweet A50. Uh, I had a great partnership with, um, well, let me explain it this way. Um, I think the per perfect partnership is when you share responsibilities, you know, you, you bring different things to the table. And um, my partner, Kenny, at Marquee Jet used to always say that he worked the days and I worked the nights, the night shift, so that made for a perfect partnership. But um, ironically, for this, we, we met playing basketball, and uh, Kenny had a, a clothing company, and um, I owned these trademarks that I wanted to put on t-shirts and hats and stuff like that. And uh, so we started working together, and it, it led to a bigger partnership. Well, I'm a true. I like to look at myself as a as a, um, a true entrepreneur in the sense that I uh, kind of a, I've always marched to my own drum or made my own rules. So my day might be a little bit different than others. Um, every day was completely different, you know, because we started uh, our companies, especially Marquee Jet, from scratch. So basically, from a whiteboard, we had to create this basically this new model in private aviation, but also um, this new brand. So one day we'd be selling, one day we'd be, I'd have my creative cap on, which I'm wearing right now. <laughs> uh, one day would, would, would be out, you know, meeting people, shaking hands, and just being nice to everybody, and just being honest um, and building relationships. Well, I started out in music as a, uh, as a rapper, believe it or not. I was signed to a label called Delicious Vinyl. And the best thing that ever happened to me is it wasn't a big hit. So, uh, you know, fortunately, because it led to other opportunities and, and led me down other avenues. But, um, you know, I thought I was going to be, um, you know, big, you know. And uh, it didn't work out that way, but it was a good thing. So sometimes failure is actually a blessing in disguise because it, 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 it challenges you to look at things differently. You learn from your mistakes. And then it creates a whole new, you know, world of possibilities. And that's what happened to me. Right. Yeah. So when we started Marquee Jet, you know, we had this great concept of of 25 hour flight cards, and um, we had a good feeling that the consumers would embrace it. But we needed a partner. Like we knew we had an idea, but like, okay, who's going to execute this for us? And we identified NetJet as the 800 uh, pound gorilla, the dominant player in the space. So. The next challenge was, well, how do we convince NetJets and Warren Buffett and his team to allow us to have the opportunity to partner up with them? And um, we were able to, to schedule a meeting with Rich Santulli, who was the CEO of NetJets, and then we, took, we did something very unusual. We literally brought in our own focus group into the meeting of athletes, of entertainers, to explain why they would be interested in the product we were offering. So kind of rather than trying to explain it and, and saying, we think X, Y, and Z will do this. We actually brought the folk, the people, X, Y, and Z, the athletes, the entertainers, into the meeting to uh, to explain why they would, you know, be interested in a product and it worked. Cool. Uh, well, I think um, I think confidence is the, is one of the most important things. I mean, I think people are smart these these days, and if you don't have passion and confidence in what you're doing, they'll see right through it. Because if you don't believe in it and you don't believe in yourself, how's that going to translate to the person you're trying to? explain, sell, or market to. Um, so the second part of your question is I definitely felt overwhelmed or, or in over my head. Um, and that really stemmed from just, you know, kind of managing expectations, you know. I've learned now as I'm older um, not to over to over deliver and not over promise. So if you're in a situation where you know you can over deliver, you're never really gonna be overwhelmed, you know? I mean this is like a classic, I, I'm, I never really, I still don't consider myself a businessman. I mean, I've had success in business, but family, friends, I mean, I have my same friends from high school, way more important than, um, you know, business success. So my mentor has always been my dad. And just, you know, I, I call it like the photo, the photo album example. When I look through my photo album growing up, you know, every great moment that I've ever had, graduation, signing a record deal, selling Marquee Jet, whatever it is, my dad's in every picture, and my mom too. So I mean, you know, by example, just being there and giving, believing me, go, in me, going back to, you know, the example of confidence, giving me the confidence, you know, my mentor has always been my dad or my mom, because um, they've kind of, they've kind of showed me the way, you know, it's difficult, you know, Warren Buffett and all these amazing success stories and you know, genius of industry. Uh, it's hard to relate, you know, to their struggles because you just 
you're getting outside opinions, you're reading about what they've done, and hearing bits and pieces of interviews, but, you know, my parents were real life examples, so, huh. Well, when you get a 900 on your SAT, and you're definitely not the smartest guy in the room, you gotta rely on, uh, on relationships and honesty, so, for me, that's everything. I mean, um, I like to think I'm a handshake guy, and, um, you know, again, I, I like to, I, my number one thing is showing up, you know, if someone's, if someone's graduating or someone has a success or a birthday or a funeral, you know, knock on wood, you know, I always want to support my friends because um, you can say anything, but actually doing is the real, you know, I've gotten this by many, by a million people and I bought into this, but at the end of the day, it's like, who shows up? I mean, I think the best business advice I ever received um, is probably when I was getting into a new business, um, gentleman said to me, you know, asked me how much do I believe in the concept, and, um, you know, I thought I believed in it, and um, I was trying to convince myself that I was believing in it, but ultimately, when he said, kind of said, would you bet the farm on it, I said, no, I mean, I don't believe in it that much, and I didn't, you know, I, I, I backed away from doing it, which ended up being a, a, a good decision, so, I mean, sometimes, you know, the, the best decision is to say no, you know, you should probably ask me, you know, I'm, a big, I'm a big, I'm really into charity. You know, I have a foundation. I ran 100 miles for charity. I started this foundation called the 100 Mile Man Foundation. So that's my favorite thing to talk about. So um, I wish that, you know. How do you run 100 miles? <laughs> you block it out of your mind and you keep running. Um, and you deal with pain. No, I mean, you know, if, I had, if you had to ask me one question, like what do I like to talk about? I like to talk about this. You know, because um, that's just... When I look back on what's the most rewarding thing, you know, we've had Martin Jet, you know, other stuff, and now Zico, Coconut Water, it's a big success that we're involved with. Um, still the most gratifying thing has been the, to me, has been the, the money I've raised for the foundation, so that's probably why I like talking.